Hey guys, welcome to our weekly news show here on Backstage with Millionaires. I'm Caleb, your host, and today we're gonna to be talking about the end of White Hat Jr.'s lawsuit against Pradeep Punia, the Indian government's approval of drone delivery experiments, the RBI's latest effort to kill cryptocurrency in India, the latest on the situation with PUBG's return, Swiggy's four-day work week, Ola Electric's new head of design, all of the latest funding news, including Baiju's potentially becoming India's most valuable startup, and more coming up right after this. All right, first up in the news, the Ministry of Civil Aviation has granted approval to 20 different consortiums, including companies like Swiggy, Dunzo, ShopX, and Asteria Aerospace to conduct experimental drone flights beyond visual line of sight. These test flights are gonna be conducted over the course of the next year, and it's expected that the data from them will help the government to create a framework for the future of drone deliveries in India. Talking about the test flight, Amber Duby, who is the Joint Secretary of the Ministry of Civil Aviation, said that after test flights are conducted, test results and proof of concept submitted by consortia will be scrutinized by the DGCA, that's the Dictoriate General of Civil Aviation. Post which, draft guidelines will be issued and will be open for public feedback before issuing the notification. Thereafter, guidelines are expected to be issued by year end. Now, I'm gonna be honest with you guys, I don't wanna get my hopes up about this because it's possible that the testing phase could drag on and take longer than expected, and then establishing firm guidelines could take just as long, if not longer. But what do you guys think? Is this something that's gonna end up being dragged on indefinitely, or could we potentially start to see drone deliveries here in India by say 2023 or 2024. And if that does end up happening, are you going to be somebody who opts for drone delivery as opposed to a delivery guy? Let me know what your thoughts are in a comment down below. All right, next up in the news, I am very excited to announce that White Hat Jr. has decided to withdraw their $2.6 million defamation lawsuit against Pradeep Punia. This whole thing started back in November of 2020, and if you wanna know more about how it all went down initially, we actually interviewed Pradeep Punia, and you can check that video out up here. Talking on social media about winning the case, Pradeep Punia said that it's not just our right, but our duty as well, to fight for our freedom of speech. Whether it is the education sector or any other sector, whether you are a student, consumer, or parent, employee, or just a concerned citizen, please remember the strength of your voice depends on your perseverance. So this is obviously a big win for him, but I also think it's a big win for freedom of speech here in India. And so besides saying congratulations to Brother Punia, I also wanted to say thank you for standing up against White Hat Jr. and doing something that I don't think White Hat Jr. expected you to do. I don't think most of us would have done that. They probably expected you to take a settlement and just keep things quiet, shut your mouth, but instead you got even louder. You spoke up, you went across social media, and I just think that's incredible. So again, thank you. All right, next up in the news, the RBI has ordered a number of leading private banks to stop offering services to crypto trading platforms. What's surprising about this situation to me is that we've already seen this situation play out last year where the RBI did the exact same thing and the Supreme Court said that this curb on crypto trading was actually illegal and they told the RBI to stop. I'm totally confused here. I don't know how or why this is happening and I would love it if you could weigh in and please explain to me how the RBI is able to take this kind of action considering the fact that the Supreme Court has already told the RBI that doing this is considered illegal. But I just wanted to share some info on how this is actually playing out on the ground. According to Nishal Shetty, who is one of the co-founders and the CEO of crypto trading platform Wazir X, two issues that the Wazir X fiat team is solving currently. One, bank account not visible. Two, payment not getting credited and money reversed back to your account. Confusion in India's banking industry is hurting 1.5 crore Indians in crypto. Now, fortunately for me, I do my crypto trading in Canada, so this isn't personally affecting me, but I would like to hear from you guys. 
if you actually are trading cryptocurrency here in India, what has your experience been like over the course of the last week and even over the course of the last year or two as things tend to fluctuate and the RBI is making changes and trying to get things done and then the Supreme Court is coming in and the Indian government is coming in. What has your experience with all of this been like? Let me know in a comment down below. All right, next up in the news, it looks like PUBG is going to be going through a bit of a name change here in India to BMI. That's Battlegrounds Mobile India. Now, so far, the Indian version of the game has not been launched, but there's speculation that at some point this month or next month, the company might make an announcement. As somebody who has enjoyed my fair share of chicken dinners, I'm really excited for this to happen and I can't wait to see what the new PUBG is gonna look like. All right, next up in the news, Swiggy deserves a shout out for announcing a four day work week for their employees this month. Now, they're obviously doing this because of the impact that the second wave of the COVID-19 pandemic is having here in India. And they're telling their employees to make sure to take lots of rest and also to spend plenty of time with family members, especially the ones who might be fighting the virus right now. Besides this, they've also set up a pandemic support mechanism as well as an emergency support team. This team is gonna help Swiggy employees to access hospital beds, ICUs, oxygen cylinders, and other emergency services during the pandemic. All right, next up in the news, this week, Ole Electric officially started building the world's largest electric two-wheeler factory. Besides this, they recently onboarded a new head of design, Wayne Burgess, who is the man behind Aston Martin's DB9, the Bentley Arnage, and a bunch of Jaguars like the XF, the F-Type and the F-Pace. This is a pretty big deal, and this news actually goes hand in hand with the news that Olay Electric, though they're currently focusing on electric scooters, will also be focusing on electric four-wheelers in the coming years. All right, moving on to some funding news now. Baiju's is in talks to raise $150 million from UBS Group at a $16.5 billion valuation. That's $500 million more than Paytm's current valuation of $16 billion. This, of course, would make Baiju's India's most valuable startup. There's also reports that Baiju's is in talks with test preparation grade up for an acquisition, and that they're also looking to acquire bootstrapped upskilling platform Great Learning. Both of these acquisitions are expected to be worth approximately $400 million. All right, next up in the funding news, EdTech startup Teachment has raised $16.5 million in a funding round led by Learn Capital. Teachment makes it easier for teachers to conduct online classes by facilitating things like live video classes, online webinars, taking attendance, collecting fees, and finding new students. The startup has more than 700,000 teachers using their platform across 1,500 cities and so far they haven't monetized this platform and they don't plan to do that anytime soon. Of course, the reason that they've been able to do this is because of the money that they've raised from investors. And these funds are also going to enable them to get new teachers onto their platform. And they're also going to enable them to explore strategic acquisition opportunities. All right, next up in the funding news, wealth management startup Nivesh has raised $1.6 million in a funding round led by the Indian Angel Network Fund. Nivesh is an investment platform that enables their users to invest across multiple assets like mutual funds, AIFs, fixed deposits, bonds, and P2P loans. They're gonna be using these fresh funds to expand their product portfolio to include new investment and credit products. Besides this, they're also gonna be investing in technology to offer their customers a more personalized experience. All right, that is all the startup news that I have for you guys this week. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please do hit the like button. That really helps us out and also if you haven't already subscribed, we post new videos every single week about Indian startups, entrepreneurs, and the latest news. Also, just wanted to say a big thanks to all of our Backstage with Millionaires members, our unicorns, and our decacorns, as well as everybody who's been applauding our videos recently. But if you're watching this video right now and you can't afford to financially support us, don't worry. The fact that you've made it this far in the video is plenty of support. So thank you for watching this episode of Backstage with Millionaires, and I will see you in the next one.